Welcome to the show today. We're going to be showing you Final Cut Pro, how it handles, was it Sony A7 III footage, footage that comes out your mobile phone, that kind of stuff. I'm going to give you straight up a live performance against a MacBook Pro, and I'm going to show you the MacBook Pro destroying the Mac Pro in Final Cut Pro. Pro, 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 Pro. So check it out here. This is uh, a vi video. I'm going to play it back. What? Can, can, you, can, you see, can you see what's going on? What is this? This is Stutter City. Stutter City. It's stuttering on the Mac Pro. Guys, it's stuttering. Now, this is just a basic multicam clip. It's got two video files, H.264 encoded video, and it's completely stuttering. Over to the Mac Book Pro. This is the Book Pro over here. The exact same footage. Playing at 2x speed. There is no stuttering whatsoever. Look at that. And this is completely unrendered H.264. No stuttering. Look, comparison. Let's run it again. You don't believe me. Stutter City and flawlessly on a MacBook Pro. So you might be thinking, yes, surely there's something wrong with your testing methodology. And the problem is these Mac Pros, they have Xeon server grade CPUs. What that means is they don't have H.264 decoding, the kind of stuff that you need to decode footage that comes out of pro-grade cameras, well, not super pro, but pro-grade cameras. So you're gonna have to be transcoding everything you do, which means you need large hard drive space and it'll slow down your production. So in the real world, if you're just filming stuff out of a camera or a mobile phone, this Mac Pro is obscenely slower than a Mac Pro. But, so one thing I will say about the Mac Pro, I've never had this experience in Final Cut Pro before, and that is it's so friggin' silent. Like, I can edit in peace with no worries whatsoever. So, this is the video we made with Final Cut. We did our little Christmas jingle. Ooh, got a heart condition. Get your blood pressure checked too. Mm. And for diabetes, which numbers are good for you? Ear infections, sick notes too. Constipation, who needs the loo? What more can I do? All I want for you this Christmas. Pretty much went around the medical center and filmed this. Tested it out, yeah, Mac Pro, it works really well. Silent AF, it was a beautiful editing experience. Performance-wise, red footage, it ran about the same. Go. And we're off, the races are in. i7, i9 versus Xeon. Xeon great, making it far. i7, i9 dropped, look at this there, the Xeon. It's going, it went all the way to 11 seconds. Take my money, Apple. They, they all pretty much ran about the same, I was, it did render out footage faster than the 16 incher. Boom, Mac Pro has done. And the MacBook Pro, the 16 inch, the base one, it is 10 seconds behind. But when I had the i9 16 incher with the maximum graphics, it, the export speeds were exactly the same as this Mac Pro. Interestingly though, oh, it was a big pause on the Mac Pro there. So both going well, 15 frames a second, I'd say something like that. And then big stutter, big stutter. This one recovers quicker. The MacBook Pro actually had a better frame rate and less lagginess than the Mac Pro. Wasn't expecting that. These two are coping to do it. They can handle six. Can they do eight? No. And old, almost, almost, almost. Nonetheless, the good thing about the Mac Pro, if you don't already know, you can upgrade the hell out of it. You can stick in a red decoding card. Hopefully it'll still work. That's about seven grand. You can stick in an afterburner card. You can stick in more cores and spend the price of around 20 MacBook Pros on it. 